Today I'm working in mixed media in Procreate. Hi everybody, Steve Elliott here again. Uh, I'm working in Procreate and I'm using mixed media. So uh, the me two uh, medias that I'm going to use for this are um, pastels and coloured pencil. Uh, and it's a bit unusual because if you're doing a pastel drawing, you wouldn't, I don't think you would use um, coloured pencil over the top of it because uh, it's very chalky, pastels are. And I think you would run the risk of um, smudging them uh, a lot, really. You'd probably have to use a fixative or something over the pastel before you could start using the coloured pencil. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that this is digital and I haven't got that worry. I can put a pastel drawing down and once that's down, I can then start work with pencil over the top of it and not have to worry about smudging it at all. So this is something I've never ever done with traditional media. I was going to say in real life then, but this is real life as well. Um, so... I'm beginning with the pastel drawing and I'm going to keep the drawings on um, two layers. So the pastels will be on one layer and the pencil drawing will be on a second layer. So I could, in effect, uh, in effect create two finished paintings by turning off the pencil layer. I will just have a pastel drawing and toggling it back on again. I've got the mixed media. It would be interesting to see what I would get if I turned the pastel off as well. But anyway, I haven't done that in this video. So what, how did I start? I started by, if, you, if you've ever used pastels at all, you'll know that you don't usually um, work on white paper. You have a coloured paper. So you buy a pastel pad and it will come in various shades of grey or dull colours. Usually uh, sort of dull or, or muted colours, uh, pastels or tints. So I've created a grey-blue colour for the background and I actually set the background of the canvas for this blue. So this blue isn't on a layer in it, such it's the background layer which you can't draw on. And I've set it to this sort of um, greyed off blue because... It was a very um, dull day, lots of cloud cover. And you can see from the photo, it's very flat. I've got to look at ways of trying to bring out some detail in this drawing that um, aren't in this sort of flat photograph. And I use a variety of pastels. I begin, I've pulled them straight out of the um, pastel tab i suppose you'd call it if you when you cho choose your uh, drawing uh, tool you click the drawing icon and then there are there's one there that says charcoal in actual fact not pastels and i used the charcoal and it was the sort of compressed stick one that uh, i found most useful that given me this rj edge look of a pastel so i i used this uh, a few of the softer ones to start with um and then I use this hard edged one, compressed one, uh, to do most of the work. And you can see I've, I'm sort of working over the old drawing. Uh, I've been quite disciplined actually, where I'm working over the old thing at once, um, trying to get, um, this pastel drawing on. And then I'm into, once I've done that, I start on the, on the pencil work. So I'm now, straight into the pencil work. So the pastel didn't take too long, really. It took about, the pastel drawing was probably, I spent about a third of the time doing that. And it is, it did look like a finished uh, drawing in itself. But then I wanted to get the contours of the rocks, of the, uh, the, the ground. I wanted to get sort of, sort of the, the shape of the hill as it sort of rolls away uh, and then the sharpness of this, that sort of steep edge uh, in the sort of middle distance um, to the right hand side all done with hatching and pencil work and the pencil work took a lot longer uh, uh, 
I was going to say more intricate, but when you look at some of the scribbles I'm doing, it's not that intricate. Some uh, some places I'm very careful, like now where I'm drawing the rocks, I'm very careful at uh, doing very defined lines and etching those in. And then on the grasses, it's much more of a scribble technique. There we go, I'm putting all those cracks and crevices in those rocks. So this is the kind of detail that I'm putting in. And I'm going to have to use some light tones somewhere along the line to um, put some detail into the, um, perhaps not detail, that's the wrong word, focus. That's a better word. We're going to need something to focus at, uh, focus on and look at uh, because, as I say, the um, photograph is very flat and there's not a lot of focus there. And I'm already starting to do that by putting some highlights in these rocks at the top of the rocks where um, I've sort of got in my head, I've imagined a light source behind me and to the right that's just sort of highlighting the rocks. And I start to work on that and depict that a little bit more. And, and you can see that these sort of abstract shapes that I'd drawn with the pastel pencil and now beginning to take shape as I'm adding detail with the um, pencils. So I'm just using the HB pencil, by the way, just a, a bog standard HB pencil. And as always, I'm going to leave some of this area untouched. So I like this sort of pattern of pastel colours towards the centre bottom of the uh, painting. So I'm going to try and keep them... Uh, clean from pencil marks. I don't want to put too much pencil work in those. I um, All the tools that I used in this, by the way, I used the um, eraser to lift out some of the um, pastel colours that are in the trees. You can see I've sort of put in the twigs of the trees initially with the uh, pastel pencil. I used an eraser to lift those out at some point. And the other tool, I, I tried the blend in and I thought, yeah, it just looks like a smudge pastel. It was very realistic, but it did look like a smudge pastel. And I thought, I don't want it to look like smudges. I want it to look like I've done a stroke with each um, block of pastel or pastel stick and just made a mark on the paper. And where that mark has gone, it stayed. I haven't done any blending at all. So there's no blending in this. Um, it's all done by just laying on colour and then etching and sketching over the top of it. So I've gone in, uh, I'm now drawing this, this stone wall and obviously I'm not going to look at every rock or, or stone, I should say, every stone of that wall and try and copy it. That would totally freak me out, cause me lots of stress and I wouldn't find it a pleasing process so i just make it up i just um make up those stones uh i sort of look at the drawing and get a rough idea of um the shapes and patterns that they're making and draw them in as necessary now i didn't like what i'd done there so i use the eraser to uh, lift that out and i'll get back to that a bit further on and you can see i'm putting a few a uh, bit of hatching just to give the uh, sort of contour of the ground there. And there's some scribbles you can see just under that rock. It is literally just a scribble. So I'm going from very sort of thought out lines like these trees to scribbles. So I'm sort of sketching the main branches of these trees and then. Uh, when I come to do add a few more twigs, they're basically just scribbled in as well. I, I just haven't got the patience to meticulously draw in every single uh, twig and branch, so it will eventually deteriorate to uh, a scribble. Notice I'm changing the colour as well of the pencil as I'm sketching these trees in. I'm going from sort of blues to browns and so on. And I'm moving all over, all over the place. So sketching, 
the trees, then I'm back on the wall, then I'm on the stones, then I'm back on the trees again. And I'm trying to keep a sort of a um, a balance over the whole of the painting. Um, and you can see it, uh, some of those uh, twigs are put in very carefully. And then um, it's the thick ones that are going in careful. It's usually ones that I put in first. And then when I put the twigs in, I will just scribble them in over the top. Change the colour there, a bit lighter again. Strengthening up the colour. Adding that bit of sort of bracken at the bottom of the trees where it sort of just disappears. Working on the wall again. And uh, I decided to go for a uh, uh, minimalist detail in the bottom left of the wall, just some etch in there, rather than trying to draw in the branches. And if you notice, if you look at the drawing, you'll notice that my wall is a lot more square. It's not as stretched out and as elongated as the photograph. And at some point, I will look at that and think, oh, totally misjudge that uh, I'll get the sky in I think it's at this point that I'm just doing a bit of a cross hatching light colour to get in that sort of cloud work I don't go over the all of the area just some of it and at this point I'm going to think I need to um, adjust that wall so I actually selected every layer and by doing that uh, basically by um, sliding the cursor to the right, I think you could select multiple layers. And once I'd select the multiple layers, I was then able to um, squash that wall a little bit. That will be coming up in a few seconds if I did record it, because th there was a few little bits. There we go. There we are. You see, I've selected it and squashed it slightly. And then I just add in a little bit more of the sky. And scribble in some more twigs. Just, to, I do think it actually gave me a nicer tree, a taller tree, a bit more like the um, one in the photo. So I was quite pleased how that worked out. Then I sort of extended the wall a little bit more. There we go. That's why I'm using the eraser. Did you see I'm using the eraser to lift out the some of the sky there? A little bit more action, and I'm just. Working over the whole of the drawing, trying to get a depth of field by using pushing darks into the background and light colours in the foreground. And then I will put a few highlights in odd places along the wall just to sort of um, give a focus, really. So we've got something that's quite different to the photograph in this finished drawing. I'm adding uh, lots more darks. Now we're going in with a few lights. And I put some highlights. Oh, I had a few more rocks, actually, in the foreground. And I sort of knocked back some more colours. But I will very shortly start adding a few highlights just on the tips of the um, rocks in the foreground just to bring them forward a little bit a bit more action just to depict that uh, ground and just to add some texture there a little bit more texture going in so just working over the old drawing here there and everywhere here we go putting in a few highlights now i'm keeping that sort of a mid uh, or fairly light gray but the more I come forward, the lighter I make the eye lights, just to make that pop a bit. Just looking at the photo, thinking where there might be shadows and adding them in and kind of putting a bit of um, counterbalance between shapes. So you notice that I actually in a dark colour, a red colour behind the ruin, just to push the wall back a little bit and then put in a few eye lights just to give a bit of uh, detail and let your eye resolve that shape a little bit more clearly than in the photograph. Here we go. Now I'm putting the highlights in. There we go. Just putting them in on the rocks just to finish those off a little bit. 
and um, just make it pop, I guess. So that's my very windy, cold day and a ruin in Bradgate Park. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a big thumbs up, as always, is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because I have lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.